Um, my name is Sarah, oh sorry, Sarah Simmons. <laughs> um, I recently completed my PhD at UCLA with Dr. Paul Barber, and today I'll be talking to you about ecological divergence and adaptation in coral hosts and the marines now. So in this session we've heard how ecological speciation can play an important um, part in diversification on land and in lakes, but there's also reason to believe that it might be common in the marine environment as well. Mainly because the ocean is a very fluid environment and larvae, the offspring of most organisms in the ocean, can travel vast distances. Here I'm showing you a simulation of coral larvae on a global scale, um, and I've highlighted areas in white that are strong barriers to dispersal, and there's only six here. Um, so speciation has to proceed, oftentimes with varying levels of gene flow. And one of the mechanisms that can, that can promote speciation with gene flow is ecological speciation. So in this case, divergent selection acts on populations using different habitats. And like we've seen in talks before, there's well-documented cases in freshwater and terrestrial systems, including Lake Malawi cichlids, indigo birds, and apple maggot flies, as well as many other examples, especially in insects that feed on plants. But like I said before, the importance um, in marine environments is unclear. But there are the, the mechanisms shown to drive ecological speciation, um, mainly interactions, strong interactions between species, occur in many marine environments. So here I'm showing you a cleaner wrasse um, cleaning a parrotfish and some barnacles living on a turtle. This is another example. It's a, a nudibranch that specializes on sponges. There's also um, little seahorses that live on growing corals, shrimp that specialize on different species of starfish. And indeed there are studies of, of host shifting in the sea, but they're rare and they use traditional phylogenetic methods. Um, some examples include nudibranchs that live on native and introduced algae, coral dwelling gobies, as well as parasitic snails that live inside mushroom corals. But there haven't been any studies that look at one species, but populations diverging on different hosts in the ocean. And this would be important to look at, uh, let me rephrase that, they haven't used genomics to look at this. So if we use genomics, this allows us to find genes that might be under selection driving divergence early on in the speciation process that might not be visible when you look at species that have already um, been created. So for um, this chapter of my PhD, I aim to look at ecological divergence in a single species of coral eating snail and use genome-wide data to see if there is genome, or is there, there is gene flow occurring, and measure the direction and amount of gene flow between host-associated populations. And then um, use outlier analysis to identify possible targets of selection and annotate those functions. A little bit of background about my study species. I work on um, Corellophila violacea. It's a ectoparasitic snail that um, lives on a variety of coral hosts in the family Paridae. Here's a picture of Paridae's lobata, and I've circled where the snails are aggregating as adults. Um, they select their host and they don't move after that. Um, they breed with individuals on that same host and feed by sucking material that the coral sends to a wound site. Um, and they only move as larvae in the water column when they disperse after a brief period of brooding by the mother. And then over here I'm showing all the different various morphologies of the coral hosts. Um, and from a previous, uh, previous work on mitochondrial DNA, we showed that there are symmetric <coughs> populations of snails that are diverging genetically. So 
Um, this is a mitochondrial tree, a mitochondrial network, and I've colored each circle by the host that they were collected from. And this clade in green and this clade in gold correspond to the tree of host corals. Um, I want to point out that they're not separated based on a single species of corals, but rather larger lineages of corals. And I found this out by making sure to collect sequences or collect tissue from the coral host and sequence them and um, include sequences from GenBake as well. And so you see this larger green lineage um, correlates with this plate in the snails and this smaller gold lineage correlates here. There are a few individuals that are genetic mismatches. So this indicates there might be some ongoing migration or gene pool happening. But we need to look at um, genome-wide data to really pin this down. Uh, another piece of evidence I have that there's behavior driving this divergence is um, I tried to do a, an experiment doing reciprocal transplants, and I collected the snails from their original host, tagged them, and moved them to um, an alternate host, and the next day I came back and found that they had actually crawled over to their original host in the wild. So this is evidence that they not only reject the wrong host, but they can sense and navigate to their original host. Okay, so the methods for this chapter were, to, I collected um, snails from six populations across the coral triangle um, and collected a total of 30 snails from each host. Then I used RADSeq and ran a, a Illumina run to uh, genotype all individuals. After filtering for quality and removing SNPs that were physically linked, we ended up with about 2,000 SNPs. And you can see in this graph showing FST versus count that um, it's an L shape with a large, a long tail out to one. The mean FST was intermediate at 0 0.04, and this was a lot lower than what we found with mitochondrial DNA indicating that there might be ongoing gene flow happening. So then we use the program structure to ex um, examine population structure with these genome-wide SNPs. Um, and it indicated there were two distinct populations and snails assigned to their core host with 88%. So you can see that here in, in green, snails um, were genetically grouping by their host parietes globata, and in gold, they're grouping by their, their host parietes cylindrica. If we look at um, migration, we saw that there were in instances of migration in an asymmetrical direction. So they're moving from globata to cylindrica. But there's also gene pool happening. So there were four hybrids identified by structure, and there was indicating equal gene flow between the hosts. Um, next, we looked at outlier loci. So we ran a program called Eftis and Arlequin, looking for loci that, were, that have, had FST values above what you would expect with neutral variation, and found that there were 74 SNPs between, and um, snails that on different coral hosts in the same populations. Um, next, we blasted these sequences to see if we could find any matches on the NCBI database. And only 17 of the 74 came up with matches, indicating that there's not a lot of genomic resources for mollusks, unfortunately, um, and I don't have a genome. So I tried to figure out what the function of the genes that we could um, get hits for were. Um, and some of the the most interesting hits were um, metal ion binding genes. And when I tried to look for examples of genes under selection in mollusks to host, there aren't any other examples of that. So I used the closest, uh, the closest example, and that is insects that um, live on host plants. 
and found that there that um, stick insects that are diverging on different host plants also have genes that with functions of metal ion binding, ion binding um, under parallel selection, repeated parallel selection, and that's work by uh, Patrick Nozzle's group. Um, I also found a gene that is involved in regulating a uh, xenobiotic detoxification pathway expression, and think that it might be involved in neutralizing oral or algal symbiont toxins. These are just ideas, these things have to be tested, so I don't know for sure yet. But. And the other six uh, outlier loci that we could identify uh, predictive functions for had to do with protein binding. And one of them was involved in receptor activity. Um, and some ideas about what this might be, be involved in is chemosensory receptor, receptors that larvae might be using to uh, sense cell cues, or adults might be using to sense their uh, differences in host corals. So in summary, um, we've shown that there's genome-wide divergence in populations of snails on different coral hosts. <laughs> there is migration, but it's asymmetric from Crides lobata to the Crides cylindrica and that there's ongoing gene flow between both hosts. Um, we also detected outlier loci under directional selection, and that these functions, the functions of these outlier loci are likely related to selection of hosts and also adaptations to dealing with toxins in the corals. So I wanted to close with um, a, ta a tantalizing possibility that Parasites in different environments, but with shared or similar ecologies, um, allow for evolution to converge on similar genes. And with that, I'd like to thank all these people that helped me with this project, and uh, including um, people at the Indonesian Biodiversity Research Center, at Udang University, and Silicon University. In addition, I'd like to thank the funding agencies that supported this research. And I'll take questions now, but if you can't think of a question at the moment, you feel free to contact me on email or on Twitter. Thank you.